break So I'd like to talk about the video that I asked you to watch. Mm -hmm. Um what was on on what subject was that video focused? Skill. Yeah, skill. Skill free. Skill free. Um skill free notes. Scale free networks deal with marked heterogeneity, marked, marked differences between different nodes in terms of what? What what distinguishes, you know, so, so when we say scale free or we talk about power law, it's power law in what? The number of connections that someone has, number of connections. Why do we care about big disparities in the number of connections that different people have? At the end of the day, like, people differ in all sorts of ways. They have different eye color, different hair color, different heights, you know, different fingernail designs, whatever. Like, like why do we care about number of connections? Yes, Malcolm. Uh, the most connected individuals tend to have the biggest influence on yeah. this movement across. The most connected individuals have have the biggest influence, and there's two really important reasons that I want to emphasize why that is. What are if there's someone with a lot of connections? Give me two different reasons they might be disproportionately impactful in the spread of contagion. Yes, I'm not. Okay, so they'll be contacting a lot more people. I, I don't want to presuppose that it's always necessarily movement. It could be someone who's connected with, you know, tens of millions of people because they sit and give a podcast, right? Or they post things. Okay, I won't comment more on that, but uh, they could be sending messages in social media, right? They could be posting to a captive audience on a platform that they bought the propaganda. Okay, I'm not going to go on. Um, but they, it might not be physical mobility, although physical mobility is very important um, in some contexts. But they have contact with a lot more people. So, for example, if they get sick or if they believe strange conspiracy theories, um, uh, they can pass them on to a lot more people, right? Because they're connected with a lot more people. So that's one reason. But to really understand it from a systems perspective, you have to understand there's something else. Yes, Francisco. Maybe it's that they remove the locally connections and allow like more global and they spread to like, not only like contains on a single like space or like area, but to allow to infect or influence more individuals that are far away. Mm. So there's something to what Francisco is saying. So like, if there's someone with huge numbers of connections, chances are that the reach of that is much further. It's global and includes many global components. And they're often connected with very connected other people. So they can sort of, it's like a fast track to disseminating it to other highways, you know, you know, express lines, uh, as it were, to other highly connected people. So, you know, one billionaire is more likely to know another billionaire and pal around with billionaires, right? I Oh, certainly, but come on. Except to observe that scale free networks, when they build up by aggregation, they do so through a sort of adverse golden rule. Those who have the goals get to set the rules. And never have I seen that more dramatically illustrated than recently. Um, uh, so with the board, which is most certain. Um, but um, beyond this, there's something else about a highly connected person that means that they're a conduit for infection. 
conduit for a contagion. Yes, Babs. Um, they act with like magnets and dispense yes. those with contagion. Exactly. They, they're like a magnet for contagion because they draw contagion from many, many parties to whom they're connected. If any of those parties are, connect, are infected, for example, they may get infected. But it's not just about infection, right? It's about spread of ideas or innovate. I don't want. I don't want to privilege spread of pathogen. It could be, could be something good. You know, it could be word of mouth effects about a, a, a service uh, or or spread of ideas or innovation. Um, uh, you know, warm. You know, uh, uh, stories that that warm people's hearts. Whatever it is, those people are more likely to pick up to get transmitted those things because they've got zillions of connections and then they disseminate them very widely. For both of these reasons, they're incredibly impactful. Yes, uh, Matthews. The screen share. Oh, um, oh, uh, you mean that it's setting screen sharing? Yeah, it's not screen sharing. Okay, yeah, and I, I'm, I'm not meaning to, like that was not a, that was not anything significant for the screen share. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, <laughs> So those folks are like magnets for infection. And, and we care about those with lots of connections um, for all those reasons. Francisco added some subtlety to it. And there's definitely the case that, you know, if you have one very, very connected individual, part of the reason they're so powerful is because they're more than likely than an average person be connected with other very, very high high connection, highly connected individuals. Okay. Um, when we talk about these scale-free networks, what's one way in which you can accrete such a marked difference in the number of connections? Where most people have comparatively few connections, but some people have just absolutely massive numbers of connections. Um, I will screen share now to to show you a sort of a notional graph of this. Um, and and you know, at the cost of unhiding here, um, you know, here we have a, most people have very, very few sexual partners, but some people have, you know, dozens and dozens and into the hundreds. There. Um, so most people have very few. Some people have enormous numbers. And there's what's called a heavy tail, meaning it's it's a lot more than you expect if it just decreased exponentially, like one over e to the k, where k is the number of connections, um, number of connections. If if you had something, sorry, if you had something like this, um, this k goes up, it would drop, and it would look something like this. And and here in these scale free networks, we don't get that. Um, we we get something where the tail is is much heavier. So I'm going to put here. This is k, and the number of connections, mm -hmm. more connections. This is bigger and bigger, and it grows bigger and bigger really quickly because it's an exponent of this. Eh? And one over it, this is can also be written as e to the minus alpha k. Remember that? Pop quiz zero. Maybe you don't want to. Um, but this is a portion of people with that many, and I'll I'll put a this, that's not an alpha, it's a proportional symbol, meaning it's it's proportional to this. Or alternatively, if that confuses you, I could write this equals some constant over this. But this is a constant, just to scale it. Uh, appropriately, this is P of K. As K goes up, this goes down. This is just a, some number, some, some constant. Mm -hmm. If I were to take the log of P of K for an exponential drop off. If I were to take the natural log of this, what am I going to get? Natural log of, of I'll, I'll put it like this. 
Natural log of this is what? Yeah. Sorry? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to have, oh, we'll just unpack it, right? What natural log of a product of x and y is is what? As, yeah, natural log of x plus the natural log of y. Mm -hmm. You comfortable with that? Remember that? High school? Yeah. Um, I know it may seem like a long time ago in a galaxy far away, but it's really important. Um, natural log of c plus that's log of x times y is log of x plus log of y, right? Um, and uh, this is natural log of this thing now, right? E to the minus alpha k. And what's the natural log of that? Okay. Yeah. Minus, and, and so minus alpha k, right? Just bring this down, right? Natural log of e to the x is Yes. Um, right? Okay, so it's linear, just as, as, as Jeff observed. The natural log, this is ln of c. Natural log of this goes down linear. Yeah? Are we okay with that? Okay. Um, now, by contrast, here, we have something quite different. You see a linear form here, right? A straight line. What's different in the x-axis here? Yeah, it's, it's the log of that. It's the log of the, this here. This axis is just k. This is log of k. So which goes down faster as we increase the number of connections? Um, which go, which which of these things an exponential relationship on the probability of having k connections or this power law which goes down faster exponential exponential goes down faster the power law is a longer tail you have to go ten times as fine as, as far out instead of just ten more connections to get to get it uh, to to decrease. So let's let's ex explore this. Um, uh, so the node's number of connections will be known as k, as we say. And with a scale-free network, the chance of having k partners is proportional, not of e to the alpha k, no, or one e to the minus alpha k, but k to the minus gamma. So here we have k in the exponent. That's for exponential. That would be if it were exponentially distributed. But in a power law, in a, in a situation, in a scale-free network, we have k to the minus gamma. That's our p of k is proportional to that. So we could say it's c times that, right? By proportional, it just means if you, if you double this, this doubles, right? It's just, uh, it's just a constant time. So this k is in the, it's not in the exponent, it's down here. Hmm? To emphasize this because on final exams, student pick can be used to talk. Okay, so no, not in the We're in the exponent, we get an exponential drop up. Um, it makes a, a big difference. Um, so, so the, the, the fundamental aspect of scale three behavior that I, I emphasized was that. When we have, when, if we have k connections, we have just this formula up here. The probability of having k connections, or if you want the number, is equal to this. Probability of having alpha k connections, of having like two k connections, right? You can imagine alpha being two. It's a different alpha that over here. It's, it's having two k connections would just be, you do the math, and it's two to the minus alpha times the k. So, so what this, this is just a constant times p of k. So what this is saying is, if you compare having two k connections with k connections, the fraction of them that have two k connections compared to the fraction that have k connections, it's just 
given by that formula, right? This divided by that is like 2K connections versus K connections. That ratio, are you tracking? Are you tracking this ratio? Of the fraction of people that have 2K connections versus the fraction that have K. Imagine K is, I'm comparing having five connections versus 10 connections, right? 10 connections, five connections. That ratio is just given by this. How does this depend on K? Sanity. How does it depend on K? It doesn't. If I didn't have a hairline fracture in my rib, I might get up on this table and declare it in a stentorian voice. Worthy just in a sister part. Um, so, or Cato, perhaps. Um, so here, this doesn't depend on K. Is it independent of K? What is that saying? Probability of having five connections versus 10, the ratio of those five connections versus 10, or say 10 versus five, is the same as those having 100 connections versus 50, 1,000 connections versus 500, right? Double it, if we consider the fraction of people with double the number of connections versus with, you know, you know, K connections versus 2K connections, that ratio is always the same. It's some constant, right? You comfortable with that idea? And, and if it gets, you could use the alpha. It's not the same alpha. It's just think of the alpha there as two. Right? It's just like two to the minus. This is a constant. Uh, gamma is a constant. And for human networks, this is a big thing. We have human sexual networks like gamma is between two and 3.5. Mm -hmm. um, and you can measure these things empirically. And we see this, every, we see it in tons of places, linking the pages on World Wide Web, dependency graphs in our software, large scale software systems, the operating systems, or compilers, or, or uh, other pieces of middleware, et cetera. Social connection. We observe it in data we collect via smartphones and look at how long people spend time together, you know, the connections with where people stay together for 10 minutes versus, you know, five minutes or versus 20 minutes versus 10, et cetera. Collaborative networks, contact patterns, we, we said, you know, um, uh, contact frequency. You, you see this appearing again, and again, and again. In the business context, in, in uh, patterns of, of, of human behavior, et cetera. This is for you know contact duration from some of our data, for example. Um, okay, so where does this scale free? Give me one place this scale free structure can result from which it can result. What's what's a process by which we could grow up one of these networks with a scale free network that exhibits this scale free structure that exhibits this power law? So those networks don't come, you know, given to us out of heaven. They don't come. They're, they're not a fundamental feature of the constants of the universe. They they get built up. You know, Google acquires its network of customers. Uh, we build software, you know, for operating systems or for compilers. We 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 engage in social behavior that exhibits scale free relationships. Give me one type of process, generative process that gives rise to these networks. Yes, Malcolm. So it'd be anything with a reinforcing loop. So maybe success breeds opportunity. Love it. I love it. You, you, you tied it in with the key thing that I was hoping a student would, which is it's related to this notion of reinforcing loop. And those who have the existing connections are more likely to get new connections. Those that have the, 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 the existing links to other sites are more likely to get new links to other sites. Those that unfortunately that have gold are more likely to often get new business connections that bring more gold, et cetera. Um, and there's a lot of features of our society and the way we build things, et cetera, that make this the case, regardless whether it's, it's in an engineering domain, you know, um, a technical side thing, a human, behavior and processes, 
socio-technical systems where it's humans working with um with uh you know uh technical systems we see these sort of patterns of preferential attachment the things that already have access to the connections tend to get more right you if you want to invest in a bank you want to have a bank account you're going to go to banks which have a lot of customers who are good reputations they're established banks right um success breeds success and you know in many areas there's no problem with that um when uh when it's taken in certain areas, uh, taken to a certain extreme city of monopoly situations, it can be outright adverse. And you can get things where, unfortunately, those who are setting the rules are those who, who have benefited from the rules. Um, so a lot of this is built up with preferential attachment. These networks are themselves generated by underlying processes. And, and I just want to make sure everyone in this class is comfortable with the idea. This class is about generative systems, right? We run simulations and they produce emergent behavior that is generative. Mm -hmm. You hear a lot about generative science these days. And a lot of that discussion is over in deep learning. And, and for good, some good reasons, there's, there's excellent generative components, but generative science um, is the name of the game with respect to simulations. It gives rise to behavior. My colleague, Josh Epstein, uh, formerly of Johns Hopkins, now of, of NYU, I think, um, North New York University, uh, once commented, um, you can't claim scientifically to understand a phenomenon unless you can reproduce it without presupposing it. Now that's a word, but basically it means you, in order to claim you understand it, you need to show how it comes about in a way that doesn't just assume it is this way, right? And the natural way to do that is you create a simulation or an iterative system that gives rise to it as an emergent property. It, it, it generates it. This class is about exactly that. You don't just presuppose a network, you know, some infection spread, right? You, you, you show how it comes about as a result mechanistically of what's going on in the simulation, you know, contacts and, and, and recoveries, and it gives rise to these, it generates these patterns. Well, so it is with our networks. They are generated structures. And um, in order to, know how to manage those structures in order to, to limit the inequities that can result and so on, we, we need to understand uh, how that uh, came about. Um, okay, um, I think, um, uh, so any any questions about this on scale premiums? I, I wanna hit on one other area today to, to just cover at least a little bit um, before we move on to two different topics. Any questions? Scale free networks, people comfortable with this idea? They're extremely common, sort of unreasonably common. And when I say unreasonably, like someone like me is shocked by how frequently you see documentation of these scale free networks. But they result often from this, this preferential attachment. And if you understand scale free networks in one area, you can understand them in another. Okay, we're going to stop that sharing.